Hi everybody, welcome to Arts Innovation Phonartica Language Redesigned. We're going to take a look at some of the problems with languages, not only in English but around the world, and we'll see what uh, we might be able to do about it. There are 7,000 languages on Earth, uh, spoken by 8 billion people, and half of those, the 4 billion, speak one of these six languages. Some speak more than one language, obviously, but this is the primary numbers that we're dealing with. So what we're stuck with is that literally 4 billion people speak one of 7,000 languages. It doesn't necessarily mean that they read and write them. In, uh, in English, for example, there's only about 5% of people in America that read books. Less than 15% read anything at all. Uh, so it's not a, a medium that people are really happy about or use on a regular basis. Is typically reserved for those in academia. So uh, for those of us who've had problems with this, um, we need to deal with this in a different way. So what I've done is create these uh, characters that um, can help us learn some of these things. The three icons here are basically for um, writing, drawing, and performing. So we'll take a look at these characters. We've got um, Phonartica, which is the alphabets. Uh, they live in the cave. 7,000 alphabets live in a cave. And then you have all of these little sun ants and cone sun ants running around trying to figure out what they're supposed to uh, learn and how they're supposed to learn it with uh, the letters of the English language. In this case, I've actually also put uh, American Sign Language in all the characters' hands so that they can be used um, for other things, other courses. I've also included what we call the Ugg Bugs because there's been for some time this, this movement with the Simplified Spelling Society in England to um, get rid of all the Ugg words that are silent letters. For example, laugh has a U-G-H on the end. It's not even pronounced Ugg. And then there's like thought is completely silent. T-H-O-U-G-H-T. Um, so because that's a serious issue to a lot of people, especially since it makes no sense, um, it's illogical that I decided to go ahead and make these into cartoon characters so we can actually play with the language, blame the language for being stupid rather than everybody that's trying to learn it. I wrote about that in a book called Phonetics, um, so you can pick that up uh, to get all the details. I actually wrote it uh, for teachers to help them teach this concept. I've also uh, written a song which is uh, recorded by my friend Jay Lauder and Jill Manning. It's available on YouTube. It's called The Alphabet Rap. Um, I really appreciate them doing that. I love the song. and. Uh, I, I felt for many years that I did not understand why in the world uh, there was only one alphabet song that everybody had to learn. Uh, it's sung to an old tune. I don't know if it's Silent Night or something. I, I don't remember what it is. But it's, um, it's one of those things that just drove me crazy all the way through school. And it's something that could be changed, should be changed, and can be changed by you or anybody else that wants to do an alternative version. The other issue is, um, again, I mentioned before in the preview, that we should learn to draw at the same time we learn to read and write. It's much easier to draw. I've taught kids as young as four to draw cartoons before they ever learn to read and write. And um, basically what you're doing is drawing what we see. Uh, we don't have to figure out all the symbolistic structure um, of trying to draw what things sound like. So what we have here is a system that I developed 40 years ago for grade school kids. And it's a sequence of drawing that helps you geometrize your mind. Uh, that's really what it does. It, it, it helps you understand relationships. Um, it actually uses the same part of the brain that uh, basketball players and football players use uh, when they're trying to catch a pass or sink a ball through the hoop. Um, and it's something that can be done every day and should be done every day like so many other things. Um, so I urge you to uh, take a look at this and try it out yourself. Uh, basically the secret to it is you always start with the eyes. That gives you a building block of information 
so for for every drawing that you do you always start in the same place and then you can actually see how you're changing everything around that central point and this is stored in your brain and you can actually at some point be able to recall all of this information and draw as many things as you want as I said I learned at age eight I've taught kids as young as four um, basically the issue is that that people don't think that you can do it I mean they just assume that you can't learn to draw until you're about the age of eight um, I have found that that's not true over, over many years of teaching uh, thousands of, of kids and adults it's actually easier for kids to do it than adults because the adults have already been trained that they're gonna fail um, and they believe it but um, you can do it everybody can do it the other section of Fanartica is performance um, people don't realize that most comedians actually have to write all of their own stuff they practice they rehearse it the goal is to get a joke uh, laugh uh, to get a laugh every 20 seconds or so so you gotta write jokes very specifically with very carefully selected words and um, it looks a lot like these guys are ad-libbing I mean they're not really because they've done it a thousand times I used to hang out with some of these guys. These are actually caricatures of people I've met. I did it for years, um, hanging out in comedy clubs. Uh, some of them I've done have become famous. These guys did not, uh, but they're really fascinating. I did their caricatures. I put them up on the walls of the club, and um, I suggest that you might want to try doing that. I always suggest to my students to, that they draw caricatures of their fellow students and their teachers um, and they would draw mine and I would draw them and so forth so it's a pretty fun interesting thing to do and again it's it's a matter of actually being able to capture a specific proportion that actually forces somebody to recognize the person you can actually see those specific details and it calls the mind the face of the person so that's um, the overview of Fanartica. We'll get into that in more detail at some other point. Thanks for listening. See you next time.